it's me, Ashley, or AMC me, and we're back with episode nine. That's eight, no? Uh, marry my husband. Okay, so last week we ended episode eight with Minwan proposing and Jiwon accepting begrudgingly because she has to go through the process. Episode nine starts with everybody singing happy birthday to Jiwon because it was a mix. It was a birthday. It was um, a surprise proposal. They were supposed to be going there to celebrate Jiwon's birthday. And everybody's like cheering Min Hwan, telling him, oh, what a great job you did for this proposal. And Suman looking jealous as hell is like how did you come up with it and ji hyuk looks at min Hwan. he comes up with an excuse like oh of course i would do this for ji Wan." yeah right but it, mentally to himself he says the drones and the fireworks were a surprise to him too and it cuts to min Hwan on his phone searching for proposal proposal ideas and he's complaining that they're thirty five hundred dollars and one was fifty thousand won. That's like thirty-five dollars and fifty dollars, I do believe. Quick math. G wa Hyuk walks in and he points at him and he's like, Come here, like follow me. And he takes him to his office and he closes the door and he's like, So the company is gonna compensate a villa for G Wan for the issue with Mr. Kim the stupid shitty boss that got in trouble with that director and min Hwan is so happy he's so thankful he was like oh this is a great idea and he's like telling when ji hyuk says this to min Hwan, min Hwan's like this dude really is in love with him because he said isn't it it's usually a condo but it's gonna be a villa and Min Wan's like, this guy really is in love with her. And he's like, well, that's too bad because she's only in love with me. Little does he know. Then he says, well, can we invite the rest of the team? Because it's going to be for her birthday. But I want to do a surprise and propose to her. And he was like, yeah, take that. I hope your heart's breaking right now. To Ji Hyuk. And he was like, you should come too. And Ji Hyuk's like, of course. And then uh, it cuts back to them at the villa and Jiwon looks at Ji Hyuk and they share like a knowing look like she know his ass did not come up with this. And Ji Jiwon tells him she was like, oh, you know, I would have been happier with uh, something cheaper. You wouldn't have. Then it goes to Jiwon and she's standing. She's just standing on the dock um, that's attached to the villa and she's just looking at the water and Suman walks up and she congratulates her on the proposal and being engaged and she tells Jiwon that she's sorry again and not to be mad at her and she even grabbed Jiwon's arm well we know she loves to grab people's arms and she like shakes it she's like oh don't be mad at me we're friends Jiwon gets a flashback of what her previous life where Jiwon said she was sorry before right before Jiwon died but when she said she was sorry, she was like, but the living have to keep on living when Jiwon's basically like dying. And she snatches her arm back from Suman and she starts to walk away. And then Suman, this psychopath, goes to the end of the dock and is like balancing on the edge. And she's like, Jiwon! and gets her to come back she was like you know i can't swim and she like takes a foot back and you see ji hyuk he's just like uh drinking his champagne but he's like looking the champagne or wine and he's looking out over the water kind of just like absent-mindedly in the same direction as ji Wan. and he hears the water splash and he runs towards the dock and it cuts back to ji Wan swimming in the water to get suman and when she goes to grab her and bring her back up, Suman drags her. She pulls her arm and pulls her down. And she opens her eyes and she looks like a demon. Okay, like scary as hell. And has the nerve to be smiling while she's trying to kill Jiwon actively while she is dying. I'm like, this girl literally 
is psychotic. Like, okay, I was just going to say, like, maybe she just low self-esteem, narcissist, like a narcissist from what I've gathered. I'm not a psychologist or know anything about that. Don't they love themselves? So taking themselves out is like something they would never do. If from what I've gathered, because they're all about self-preservation, I thought. But anyways... Ji Hyuk gets to the dock and he covers Ji Won with a towel while Suman's just over there coughing, trying to look cute, like <laughs> spitting out water. And then it cuts to them inside the villa and Ji Won's changed her clothes and Min Won's like riding, waiting outside and he tries to come and put a blanket on her and she just walks right past him and goes to sit on the couch by He Yeon. And they're like all saying they're glad everything went okay. And he Yeon is like, what happened? And Min Wan, because I, I know he's dense, but I feel like he knows something. Like, he's not that dense. He was like, did she dive in? No, she crazy, right? And um, Ji Wan come, comes up with an excuse. She's like, no, she slipped and fell. I think she was a little drunk. And Ju Ron comes out and she was like, well, Suman's sleeping now. And she's like, you're basically her savior. Ji Hyuk comes over with some hot chocolate because I think Min Hwan tried to give her a beer or she had picked up a beer. Ji Hyuk gives her a hot chocolate instead to warm her up. Min Hwan, being jealous, takes the blanket that she didn't didn't want to take before and throws it over her legs. And he's like, let's heat warm you up. Ji Hyuk's like, so we should like get to bed. Like, let's cut this party short because... Suman freaking ruined it, being a loser. And he Yuan, she is not catching the hint. She was like, what? It's only 11. We still got to drink more and have a good time. And Juron like drags her again by the arm. And she's like, yeah, I'm kind of tired from all of the all of the stuff that happened. And she drags Juron with, back with her, like up the stairs to the bedrooms. And Min Hwan looks at Ju, Ju, Juwan and he's like, you want to go to bed? She's like, yeah, I'll head up after I finish my cocoa. It shows her just sitting on the couch, just contemplating everything that happened. It cuts to Min Hwan going into the bedroom and he pulls the blanket off. Why is Suman in their bedroom on Ji Wan's side of the bed trying to sleep, act like she's sleeping? We know her ass is not sleeping. And... <laughs> Min Hwan's like, what the hell are you doing? I just proposed. What are you doing in here? Ji Wan's right next door. And she's like, isn't that what makes it more fun? And she's like, well, Ji Wan, crazy essay. She said, Ji Wan made her happy by jumping in the water to save her. Now it's his turn to make her happy. I wanted to slap the shit out of her ass. Like you already slept with them once, girl. You, you got your, you got your lick. Or you got your payback. That's what you want to call it. And then it cuts back to Ji Wan on the couch. Uh, Ji Hyuk comes up to her and asks her if she's okay. And she gives him like this look of worry. And she tells him she was like, she didn't fall in. She jumped in. She's like, I don't think I know Suman at all. Her initial plan to just get those two pieces of trash together and wipe her hands clean of them. It doesn't look like it's going to work out like that. She said Suman dragged her down when she tried to save her and she was like and she was smiling. She looked like she was happy that she didn't care if she died as long as I died with her. That's what scared her. She was like I was she was like I was hoping I was imagining it but I wasn't. She was like this girl is basically going to bring me down with her no matter what it takes. She's not going to be content with just having Min Wan and being married to him. She's going to keep coming after me. It's like, what the heck? Why? Why, why, why? Why? It tells you in the webtoon, but I don't know if it's going to be the same. So I'm still saying why. Like, girl, you're psychotic. Like a demon. Ji Hyuk grabs her hand to like comfort her. But as soon as he does, somebody comes down the stairs. You want to guess who it is? It's 
Kiyon. She just came down there to get some water. But they like went and hid in a corner and he's like got her wrapped in his arms. <laughs> so cute. So she drinks her. She goes back upstairs. And when they separate, he tells her he wants to show her something. And our boy pulled out a yacht. They go out into the middle of the lake. And he says like this is where he likes to come so he can gather his thoughts or when he's confused about something. And he said, nobody knows the future. He was like, we may know a little bit more than others, but she learned something about her friend of 26 years yesterday. And he said that Suman is changing her tactics now and being more aggressive because Jiwon's not an easy target like she was in her previous life where she was more naive. And he wishes her a happy birthday. And she tells him thank you for the proposal because she already knew it was him. And for such a great birthday, it's one of the best ones that she's had in a while. And the next day it goes to Jiwon and she's getting, she's at work and she's like, hey everybody, like putting her, her hair behind her ear showing off her ring and everybody's like ah and she's like yep i'm engaged making sure everybody in the office and the company knows they're engaged um uh, and when they're riding on the elevator up ji hyuk made it on the elevator and he's standing behind her while they're going up to their floor more people get on the elevator jiwon gets pushed beside him and their hands like brush each other and she just moves her hand behind his and i was like hmm that's also a good parallel they've made i think there's been three parallels the two i know for sure is when min Hwan, yeah there's three Min Wan and Su Min were in the elevator. They were actively like flirting with, well, she was actively flirting on him, touching on him, leaning into him, whispering in his ear, very inappropriate. And they were facing each other. And when it happened with Ji Wan and Ji Hyuk, they're beside each other and they made sure to not make it more than what anybody would assume. And then there was the part when Ji Hyuk told Ji Wan he liked her. He respected her boundaries. And both of them were like so amazed or just like astounded when that happened that neither one of them could sleep the next day. Whereas when Su Min and Min Hwan, when he took her out to eat on Ji Wan's dime, they both lied saying that they couldn't sleep when both of them slept like a rock. And then Jiwon, when their hands brushed in the elevator, she got a flashback of him hugging her uh, when they were hiding from He Yeon at the villa. And then it cuts to them on the roof and Ji Hyuk asks her, why are you telling everybody that you got engaged if you're going to break it off? And Jiwon says, because the more people know and find out after I break it off, the bigger hit it'll be to his life. And I was like, yes, girl. Give it to him, okay? Light his ass up like he deserves. And she tells him, what is he doing this weekend? Because he should go to the mall. Because she's gonna... What did I say she was gonna do? She's gonna make Min Hwan's pockets weep. We already know they're crying already because of the stock, the stock issue. And he said, unfortunately, he can't go. He has to go to Japan. But he, he'll be rooting for her. And it cuts to the break room um, in their office and Min Hwan goes up to Su Min and he says that they're having a family meeting, um, but he, they're going to have to cut it close because his mom is doing a cooking class and Su Min, very attentive to that last part, part of it. And then they start flirting in the break room and Ju Ron walks in and she's like, oh, what are you guys talking about? Planning another surprise for Ji Won? He Yuan walks in right behind her from a different area and says he has to do something legendary for the dinner after that proposal. And then Ji Won walks in and she says that she really didn't expect that from him. Her she has she now has high expectations from him. And Min Hwan seems like a little uncomfortable because we know our boy basically got like flies coming out of his pockets he's like probably going 
into his savings at this point, obviously, or using a credit card. And he's like, what do you mean? And he yawns like, don't you know, when you go to take your fiance to go meet the parents, you have to buy her everything from head to toe, a purse, but you can't buy her shoes because in Korean uh, customs, a lover or significant other buying the other one's shoes is a, it's bad luck. And it means that they're going to run away from you. And she's like, the shoes, the best friend should get those. And she talks, she motions at Suman. <laughs> and then after she says that, he yawns like, yep, I'm going to go tell everybody. So she go runs, she goes to run to tell everybody in the office that uh, Min Juan is about to buy Suman a whole, like whole new outfit and spend all kinds of money on her and probably bragged about the proposal too. So they think like, oh yeah, they're, they're building his pride up. So he does, he has to do something big or he'll look stupid. And I'm like, yes. And then it cuts to Jiwon and she's in her apartment and she's making a list of all her items at home when there's a, the doorbell goes off and it's Suman. She's there with a birthday present for Jiwon. It's shoes, like he Yeon suggested. There are no regular shoes. They're the red shoes, the red pumps from the first episode that Suman was wearing when she went to go visit Jiwon in the hospital. And when Jiwon went to her house and she found the red shoes in the doorway, when she found out they were cheating. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Jiwon, or Jiwon, Suman again, Suman again says, I'm sorry. Can you forgive me? And she was like, I also have another present for you too, for your wedding. I have a wedding present for you. And she tells her she has tickets for them to go to a cooking class. Jiwon notes to herself that that never happened before, but the place where they're having the cooking class, she has heard of. And she asks Jiwon, she was like, is this, are these presents okay with you? And she's like, yeah. And Suman's like, I really just wanna be, become your other half like this other half shit is scary like she only wants her she only wants jiwon to love her and be with her but whenever somebody tries to get in the way she go she has to covet it and conquer it and take it from her and i'm like this girl the fuck is wrong with her besides a lot but after she leaves jiwon like breaks down in the doorway while she's looking at the shoes and she's saying this is great like she started she's like crying and laughing at the same time and she's like this is great she was like when i first came back i tried to give some kind of leeway hoping that they would change but they're just evil people and she was like just continue being evil because it just makes me doing my revenge it makes it doesn't make me feel sorry for what i have to do and i was like that's true and I can understand where she's coming from, where she was hoping that things might change, but they're they're just pieces of shit, girl, unfortunately. And they never really loved you like you love them, sadly. There are people like that. And then the next day, it cuts to the cooking class, and we meet Kim Ja-ok. Kim, Kim Ja-ok. That's why I'm going to say her name. That's Min Wan's mom. And this lady is a piece of work. She's arguing with the receptionist because she had to pay for parking. Mind you, where she goes, she goes to this same mall for her cooking classes. Um, And the receptionist lets her know, she was like, hey, per our policy, you get free parking for up to two hours. You were here for six. So you got to pay for those other four hours, girl. But she's up there bullying her, yelling at her. And then she finally comes into the class where Suman and Jiwon is. And she takes the spot where they are. She throws the bag that they brought over to another counter for them to work. And Jiwon is like, we all pay for the class. There's no assigned seats. And she was like, I'm your elder. Listen to me. And Suman trying to make a good impression because she knows it's Jiwon's or Min Hwan's mom. She doesn't know Jiwon also knows it's her. She's like, come on, we should listen to her. And she moves over to where they threw her stuff. And Jiwon just smirks at Da Ok, like, I got your number, bitch. And then it switches to Ji uh, Juran. She's at work, like trying to get stuff together for the project. And she gets a call and it's her daughter. And she's crying because she's hungry. 
and she's like asking her like where's your daddy at and the little girl's like daddy's busy i'm hungry mommy where are you it's a sunday and she asks if he's home and you never hear her answer you never hear the little girl answer if he's home or not so she rushes out of work and gets a taxi but it's weekend traffic and she's stuck as she video calls her daughter in the taxi and she's crying telling her she's hungry she doesn't and she tries to calm her down telling her hey i'm gonna be home soon it's gonna be okay and while she's waiting for traffic mr lee shows up he pulls up right beside her i was like does he know did he hear overhear her conversation because he pulled up right beside her on a motorcycle the best transport transportation in bumper to bumper traffic <laughs> and juran sees him and she's like uh uh hold on, honey, mommy's going to be home soon. And she rolls her window down and she's like, Mr. Lee, help me. And he just like looks at her and he obliges because we, we, we all, we all know we trying to figure out, we know you like her. And she rushes home. Thanks Mr. Lee uh, multiple times and gives him his helmet and rushes inside. Why does she rush home? And her husband is there with the daughter at the dining room table eating ramen noodles and she gets upset that he's feeding her ramen noodles because why you don't work she obviously makes enough money for you to buy groceries you don't do anything all day you don't work you can't cook for your child so she has a nutritious meal i can understand the noodles though when i was a kid i loved eating ramen noodles but that's usually like right at, that was like an after school snack and then later i would have a real meal because it was, I was like simple and I could cook it myself. She's like four, five, something like that. And she immediately asks her husband when she comes in, she's like, where were you? He was like, he said he had work to do. What work, sir? We know you ain't got no job. What work? And then he has the nerve to tell her or cook her food herself if she doesn't like what he gave her to eat and goes to sit over on the couch and proceed to finish playing more video games. If I wanted to slap the dog shit out of four people, it's four people now. Suman is number one. Minhwan is number two. Number three is Jok Ja Ok, Minhwan's mom, and four, Juran's husband, whose name I haven't I'm not committing it to memory at this point. <laughs> Juran looks like she's starting to have stomach issues, like like the same ones that Jiwon was having. She might want to go to the hospital. But then it cut to back to the cooking class with Ja Ok, because I'm going to keep calling her Minwon's mom. And she's complimenting Suman on her cutting skills. And Suman says she loves to cook. And then she critiques Jiwon's cutting skills because she's all slow and acting like she doesn't care. And Jiwon's like, oh, it's fine. I don't have to cook. My boyfriend loves to cook. And he said he would do it for us. <laughs> and then the mom, Ja Ok, tries to flirt with the cooking instructor saying, don't let these girls just come in here and try to act like they're trying to learn how to cook so they can try and get with you. But shut up. You don't know. And then at the, it cuts to everybody's dishes being done. And the instructor says Jiwon's looks the best out of everybody's. And it cuts to a flashback of Jiwon getting training from uh, Ja Ok on how to make the dish that they're making today in class. And it cuts to <laughs> Ja Ok and she's trying to, she's talking shit in her head. She was like, okay, so it may look good. She's like, let's taste it though. She says that part out loud and she grabs, um, I think it's rabbit, car carrot, rabbit. I said that incorrectly, but it's fine. It's a dish with uh, different kinds of seasoning. And she tastes it. Chuck, she's like, it tastes just like the instructors. And she gets more. And Suman, whose station is right next to Jiwon's, is pissed. She thought she was going to come in there and shine and make Jiwon look stupid. Mission failed yet again. When they're leaving, they're going to get coffee. Suman's like, H how did you learn how to cook? She's like, oh, I just, I just took my time because I wanted it to look good. And while they're there, Min Hwan shows up because it's time for him and Jiwon to go get her outfit for the dinner with his parents. Jiwon's like, oh, Min Hwan, you're here. We're, we have plans today. 
we're going to go get an outfit for me to wear for our, your parents' dinner. And she asks, she makes sure to tell this in front of Suman. I do believe she did this on purpose. She was like, what time are we meeting your parents tomorrow? And he's like, oh, I'll let you know. He doesn't say a time. He doesn't say, he doesn't say a time. And Suman gets mad because she wanted to hang out with Jiwon in the store. Like she wanted to go shopping with her. And uh, Jiwon's like, do you want to join us, Suman? And she's like, no, I have plans. But before she leaves, she goes and squeezes Jiwon's arm. And she says she's still alive because of her. Because Jiwon saved her. And then she walks off. And it's like, girl, that don't mean she like you. Just didn't want to feel guilty when if you die and she could have helped you. And then it cuts to Ji Huan on the plane because he's supposed to be going to Japan. And one of the stewardesses comes by and asks him if he want to see if he wants to see any duty free items. And he says no at first, but then he says yeah. And he, they show I'm pretty sure it's product placement, but this necklace is beautiful. It's the it's um advertisement for the similar necklace to the one. Minwan got for Suman, but I think this one's bigger and authentic. I don't think Minwan had enough to buy her the real one. It just looked better. It was bigger than the one that he gave Jiwon in the past. And when he sees it in the magazine, he thinks of back to when they were at the workshop and Jiwon mentioned to him that the one that he got for Suman was a lot nicer. And then it cuts to Jiwon and Minhwan shopping and guess what she goes to pick out and she the, as the first item for their shopping spree the pink Chanel purse that she looked at when she did when she got the um makeover with He Yeon and she's like no I'll save that for later this is the later she that's the first thing she picked and Min Hwan sees the price and he's like what no and the sales clerk comes over and she was like are you guys newlyweds and Ji Won's like mm hmm and she's like well this is the perfect purse for you and Ji Won's like well I heard his mom does have high standards and she was like and everybody at work is like really excited to see what he buys me that even I'm kind of nervous. His pride again, he gets the purse for her. And then it cuts to a montage of Jiwon going into all these stores. And she has bags on bags on bags. They go to a coffee shop. Min Hwan is sitting there while Jiwon goes to get the coffee. And he's surrounded by bags. I'm like, buddy, just pull your pockets inside out because you broke. You broke, broke. <laughs> and then it cuts to previous uh Jiwon's previous life when they're at work and Minwon tells her she can't wear her cheap clothing that she probably buys from like Shein or Fashion Nova or other websites like that because his mom likes expensive things and he gives her or his his mom has high standards and he gives her his card to use and at that time she was worried about spending too much of his money because he was struggling and she was like funny because he would have spent that money on another woman, no problem. And then it goes, cuts back to the cafe and she's sitting, they're sitting beside each other and they're just talking and cut to them sitting across from each other at the cafe. And Jiwon tells him how much she loves the purse that he got for her. And he has the nerve to say, women should meet the right man. Funny, funny coming out of your mouth, sir. And Jiwon agrees because she's right. He is not the right man. But then Minhwan mentions that they have a they need to find a good place to have their meal. And guess who calls Jiwon? Inho. And she takes her because her phone was faced face up, so you could see he was calling. She took it and turned it over. And Minhwan's like, doesn't he work at a restaurant? Doesn't he own a restaurant? And Jiwon's like, mm-mm. And he grabs her phone and answers it. And Inho was shook. He was like, Is it isn't this? Is this Jiwon's phone? And he's like, yeah, but this is her boyfriend. And I was like, I heard you're a great chef. And he asked if they can use his restaurant because they're engaged and they're meeting, Jiwon's meeting his parents. And then asked if they have a discount. Had the goal to ask if they have a discount. <laughs> and then after the call ends, it cuts to Inho and he's like just sitting there like, what the heck? I think he's more shook that he heard their 
engaged. But when it zooms out, Inho's sitting with three other people. It's the three girls that bullied Jin, uh, Jiwon in high school and tried to bully her at the reunion. And they were they wanted him to call her because they wanted to give her a genuine apology. They were like, we're so stupid. We were played by Suman and we're never going to listen to her again. And they're like, we understand if she doesn't want to ever talk to us. And Inho was like, well, from what I heard, she's getting married. So you can give her some congratulatory money. He Jiwon calls him back and he runs off to go answer it. And she apologizes and tells him that he thinks, that he doesn't have to do anything and he thanks her on her engagement and says that he'll do anything he'll he'll do it for her his first love and he'll make it very he'll make it special oh i don't want them to get together but he's so sweet and then it cuts to ji hyuk and he's going into a hospital room gramps is in the hospital it doesn't say what for and he tells um, grandpa that he broke off his engagement to yura and grandpa says that she's a good, she's a fantastic girl. She's a hundred times better than Jiwon. Ji Hyuk is pissed because, he, you know, he told him, we, we know he told him to leave her alone. He was like, these are my feelings. I'll deal with it. Stay out of it. And grandpa's like, how can I? He was like, you're being a fool. You use, you use the drone and the yacht and the villa for this girl, for this woman who's taken and i was like you right grandpa you right but but you don't know you don't know what's going on so calm down pipe down old man <laughs> and g it shows g hyuk looking at his grand he just like looks at his grandpa he doesn't say anything he just looks at him and his grandpa's like what and it does a flashback of the car accident he did die they show his funeral they show he yon holding his portrait and walking and they're ca carrying his casket and i'm like damn because i thought maybe he was gonna wake up in the hospital and i mean well he had to die right so i don't know what i was thinking but yeah that car accident he died he just takes his grandpa's hand and hugs him and he says i'm sorry and then it shows him sitting out parked in front of Jiwon's apartment building. And she's like walking from she's walking home from the store and she walks past his car and she sees him in there. She knocks on the window and waves at him and she goes and gets in the passenger seat. And she's like, oh, my gosh, what were you doing here? And he was like, oh, well, there's a warehouse around here. She looks at him and he's like, OK, that's a lie. She, she he was like, I just missed you. And I was like, oh, well, he says, remember when you asked me, what do I want in this life? He's like, I really couldn't answer you. He's like, since birth, I've always had a role that I've had to fulfill. And he's like, this time. And do like this time? Do you feel like you want you want to do something else? And he's like, no, he was like, he still doesn't know. And she was like, OK. Because she's like, that is kind of a broad question. She's like, what's something that you want to do right now? And she tells him, when I first came back, I was overwhelmed and scared. And I was worried about money and what I was going to do, where I was going to work. Um, but she's like, after I got my bearing, she was like, one of the first things I did, she was like, she talks about when she tripped Suman and she spilled all that food on Min Hwan. And she was like, after that, things started to get clearer. And she was like, me getting Suman and Min Hwan to marry is just part of the process. And while he's listening to that, Min Hwan looks at her and he just puts out his hand like on the center console. And he was like, I know what I want right now. And he was like, I want to hold your hand. And I was like, oh. And she like, puts her hand he like has his hand out like this and she like just puts her hand like this and he moves his hand so that their hands are like this and i was like oh the next scene it's the morning of the dinner ja -ok is yelling at the husband about what he should wear and she seems to only care that he but wears something expensive so i feel like besides and because of the way she style i think it's just the way that she styles her hair as I talk about my hair, but anyways, I think it's just the way she styles her hair. She doesn't seem like she cares about actual fashion. She just wants to have on expensive pieces. 
so people can see that they have money, even though they might not be fashionable. Because the husband didn't like any of these stuff she was trying to make him wear. But she's like yelling at him about it, saying, it's expensive, so just put it on, like whatever lady. And Min Huang comes out and asks why are they arg why they're arguing. And he was like, we're going to be late. And she's like, yeah, I'm going to be 30 minutes late on purpose because some little brat's trying to take away my baby. Girl, don't nobody want your trash ass son, but another trash ass person. And I can't wait till they get trashed up together. <laughs> And um, while he's sitting there, Min wants like, so are you really going to buy me a house if I get married? You know what the budget's looking like? I'm like, listen to this dude. Always about money. Always about money and getting his dick wet. That's all. That's all he's worried about. And spending other people's money. Uh, but while Min Wan's sitting there, he gets a call and it's Su Min. She's outside his apartment, outside his parents' apartment, his apartment. And she tells him to come out and he does. And he's like, what are you doing here? We're about to go meet uh, Jiwon for the parents meeting. And she was like, oh, it doesn't matter. I know you're mine. And she just like feels him up, like feels down his chest in public where anybody in the neighborhood can see them. And she was like, he's like, well, what are you doing here? She was like, I was just checking to make sure my, her, uh, she's like, I'm just checking to sure my man is okay. He's not your man. Okay. Because if he was, he wouldn't be going to this dinner without you because you would be at the dinner. She was like, he was like, I only got 10 minutes. She was like, I'm going to need longer than 10 minutes. And she was like, well, go have fun at your dinner with Jiwon and walks away. And Minwon grabs her arm. And I think it's implied that they did go and sleep together. I don't know where. It cuts to the restaurant and Inho's like setting the place, place settings for everybody. And there's another chef there and he's like, I can do it if you don't want to. And he's like, no, it's OK. I'll, I can do it. And while he's there, he's just like reminiscing about Jiwon when they were in high school. And when he goes to go get more stuff, the chef that was there with them, he's like, then why do you look so sad? And I'm like, oh, and then Min Wan rushes in and he was like, no one's here. He's like, she's not here. And then he immediately gets on the phone and calls Jiwon. He's like, where are you? Both my parents are here. Why aren't you here? His parents walk in and his mom's like, she's not here. And he's like, Minwon's like, oh no, she's in the bathroom. And while he's, um, she's, before he hung up, Jiwon's like, I'm at the door. And as they're all in the little area where they're going to be eating, Jiwon walks in looking like a baddie. Okay. Wearing all black. She's got this outfit is spectacular. OK, she looks like she's ready to go clubbing, not like she's going to go meet some parents. And I was like, yes, bitch, come in there looking like a sexy villain. All right. And shut this shit down. Tear shit up. Don't tear shit up because it's your friends. Your friend works there. But <laughs> cut these motherfuckers out. When she walks in, she's like pleasant. She greets them sweetly. She's like, oh, hello, I'm Jiwon. And then when she meets eyes with the mom, she's like, oh, we met each other at the cooking class. When they sit, when they sit down to dinner, the first thing his mom mentions is she's like, oh, so I heard that you don't have any parents. I'm pretty sure you're, you're undisciplined. And Jiwon's like, no, I had my dad until I was 23 years old. She's like, and but, you know, my mom did leave when I was 14 because she was having an affair. Minwon spits out his water. <laughs> his mom spits out her water. <laughs> And Jiwon gives the napkin to Ben Juan and not the mom. And she puts her, the mom puts her hand out like she expects the napkin. And Jiwon's just like looks at her and then she's like, huh. And looks around like, I know you didn't expect me to give you one. <laughs> I'm taking care of your son. <laughs> so she grabs one for herself and like dabs her mouth. And Ben Juan like mentions what she's wearing. He's like, where's the clothes that I bought you? And she was like, oh. I'm going to save those for a special occasion. She's like, but you know what? His mom, she's like, but you know what? Your son took me shopping and he bought me all of this stuff and this purse. And the mom gets so jealous because she was like, you know, the only thing he's bought me is some red pajamas. And I'm thinking of those red flannel pajamas <laughs> that people usually wear for Christmas. That's what I was thinking of when she said that. And I was like, damn, he is stingy. He ain't even bought his mom. Well, I can kind of see why he didn't. But it's his mama. She loves him. <laughs> and then it shows Ji Hyuk 
and he's having a he's signing a will and it's for if something were to happen to him whoever takes care of Pang has to take care of him as well as he's taking care of him and i was like oh and mr lee is confused he's like are you going somewhere like you don't even like cats and Ji Hyuk's like, I like that one. <laughs> I like him. <laughs> and when Mr. Lee leaves, he pulls out the necklace. And while he's looking at it, he's wondering if Ji Won's doing okay. And then it cuts back to the dinner. Ja Ok is like, okay, I'm gonna level with you because I'm an honest person. I don't like you, but as long as you're willing to learn, we can work with this. And Ji Won's like, I can, I can do it fighting and then the mom goes through her little spiel of what she expects from min Juan's wife first of all everything she says is a whole bunch of pick me bullshit i know this is an issue that's been brought up a few years ago around before covid started or when covid started but you know how society likes to let women think that their relationships or their marriages are 50 50 and they're both working, both are working full time, but the woman is the one who takes care of all the household things. Like the husband doesn't do anything, maybe take out the trash, but the wife has to take care of anything, everything, raise the kids, make the food, go to the grocery store, all of that. She expects Jiwan to do while working full time. She says they should have four kids, four boys specifically like she has any decision over that um she also wants her to go to the doctor to be cut to get her uterus checked because some women have beat up uteruses she says and since they he has a wife now they can start holding ancestral rights for their family not jiwan's where she would hold she used to hold one for her dad all the time and when she and the mom's like, if you don't know how to, I can teach you. Jiwon's like, mm. and Jiwon's like, oh, she's like, no problem. She's like, so when am I quitting? And the mom's like, what? She's like, yeah, you want me to do all these things while working? There's not enough time in the day for me to do that. And Ja Ok, she's like, no, kids are expensive. You can't quit. You have to do all of that. Did I did I mention that she wants her to cook three? meals a day while working full time and raising kids none of this eat this cereal eat these pop tarts in the kitchen cooking multiple dishes multiple side dishes okay she wants like mm. well first of all what you said about the ancestral rights is incorrect she's like i used to do them for my dad all the time and joe ok rudest bitch ever she says well that's where you're wrong because your dad must have felt guilty he didn't have a son, so he had you doing it. And Jiwon was done. She, she's like, cut the bullshit. She's like, Ajima. I was like, oh. And this, the lady was like, what? Ajima? She's like, yeah, Ajima. Who are you to judge somebody? And I was like, get her. She was like, first of all, I'm calling off this wedding. And she was like, your son isn't that great. And if you think your son is so precious, why wouldn't you think other people think that ch their child is precious? And then she gets up and she was like, the wedding, I'm the one who's calling it off. And then she gets up and walks out and Minwan tries to grab her. She hits him with the purse while she's walking out and she struts out struts out like a bad bitch i was like yes go girl get it yes uh uh i was like i know she felt so good saying all that and while she tries to leave min Wan rushes out and grabs her arm and she says he's like what are you doing she was like i'm breaking up with you i never want to see you again and she snatches her arm back and walks and he tries to grab her arm again and all those lessons she put them fully to use and she body slammed she flipped him over and body slammed his ass on the ground and the mom is like oh my god in ho who's like in this another part because like on the grounds there's like separate parts you can go to to eat he's like coming out i guess for like the next the next serving of food and he sees <laughs> min Juan get body slammed and min Juan's on the ground just like screaming because you know his back is all fucked up and jiwan just smiles like the happiest smile ever and then the episode ends y'all this episode was fire okay i loved it that ending was so satisfying seeing min Juan get his ass tossed like that i watched it a few times 
somebody has a short and I kept watching their short over and over again. because so I was like, so satisfying. That looks, oh, that just felt so good to see her putting the mom in place because she's an outdated old Ajima who needs to get hip with society and realize men can have fertility issues too, not just women. Um, Suman, I said it earlier, but that bitch is a certified psycho. Never in my life would I put my life in danger to force somebody to save me for my twisted mind to mean that they they must love me and they forgive me. G Hyuk's grandpa, I'm tired of his ass. I said I was going to be cool because he seemed like he backed off, but I hate him. I don't hate him. He gets on my nerves. Like, calm down, old dude. Aren't you in the hospital? That's probably why you're in the hospital. You got high blood pressure. Calm your ass down. And then Jihyuk, he's always fantastic. The part with in the car, that was really sweet. I don't know. I don't know if he's going to give her that necklace. Maybe. I don't know. Hyeon was a, a Hyeon was hilarious. She is like the catalyst to make sure that Minwon spent all the money he obviously didn't have to take Jiwon out shopping. I already talked about Suman being crazy. Juron. I'm gonna need her to go to the hospital because I think girlie is sick and she needs to take care of that because obviously her husband is not going to be of any help if it's anything serious. He's a selfish prick. But the outfits, uh, first Jiwon's outfit when she went to the meeting with the parents, fire. Um, her outfit when she went out to eat in shopping or when she went to the cooking class, with Suman and when she went shopping with Minhwan, that outfit was great. Her outfit she wore to work uh, when she was showing off her engagement ring. Uh, that outfit was really cute. Suman, she had two nice outfits. I liked the I liked her shoes that she wore when she was a psychopath and fell into the water even though she couldn't swim. I can't remember what her outfit looked like. It probably was cute, but I wasn't paying attention to her ass. Oh, Suman's white outfit that she wore when she showed up in front of his house when they were going to the meeting, to the parents' meeting, so Jiwon could meet his parents. Her coat looked nice. I didn't see what the outfit looked like, but that coat was really nice. Like a cream color. Yeon had on a cute outfit when they were in the break room and they were talking about what what Min Hwan's gonna get Yuan for the parents' dinner. Mr. Lee on the motorcycle. He looked really good in the with those yellow glasses and on the bike. I didn't even know that was him when he first pulled up. I was like, oh, okay. I still think he overheard her conversation with her daughter. But it could have been a coincidence. I feel like he overheard her though. I think that's it. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll be back with episode 10. Have a great week, day, time, whatever it is right now. And I'll see you later. Bye.